Excerpts from my translation of The Japanese Linguistic Landscape, Reflections on Quintessential Words by Nakanishi Sisuma, published in 2019 by the Japan Library. As always, I'll be reading two entries from the book. This time I will read Asobu and Furakoko. Asobu, to play. What exactly does this word mean, asobu? At its most basic level, the word expresses the state of bonyari, that vague, dreamy state of mind. The word's first two syllables, aso, are related to uso, which means a lie, a deception. I assure you I'm not lying about this. More fundamentally, uso refers to something that lacks substance. There is a related word, itsuwari, which denotes something that is counterfeit or false contradicting real fact. The vague, indistinct state of Bonyari was originally a spatial device considered a prerequisite for enabling the divine revelations of the gods to come into one's head. This is why Miko, shrine maidens who communicate divine commandments, would dance around in circles until they had worked themselves into a frenzy, losing themselves in the dance, and ultimately collapsing to the ground. The accompanying musicians would perform clamorous music that would further push the Miko to transgress the boundaries of sanity. Accordingly, the act of playing music was expressed with the verb asobu. The divine spirit play known as kami asobi in the Heian period is today called kagura, sacred music and dance. <clears throat> the reason that word asobi was used for that sort of sacred music involving inspired m movements in the presence of the deities has a lot to do with the above historical roots. Now this act of throwing oneself into a state of uso, a state of total emptiness and insubstantiality, eventually came to be performed without the intervention of divine spirits or kami. The word asobi thus came to express a feeling of auspicious joy and delightful gratification. The human spirit suffocates when the myriad phenomena of this world become too serious, phenomena of this world become too serious, too earnest, and when our energies become focused entirely on practical day-to-day -day matters, we start to feel constrained and constricted. Our mood grows totally depressed. Our spirits become dampened and despondent. The English word breakfast originates in the notion of breaking the commandment. It is precisely because one transgresses the law, breaking the injunction not to eat, that a fresh cup of coffee and morning meal tastes all the better after fasting. If it were not for our asobi time, this time of, for transgression, for vacantly tuning out the world, we probably would not even be able to enjoy our breakfast coffee, toast and coffee. Imagine a world without this designated time. How dull and restrictive that would be. A while back, I participated in a TV program alongside several girls who were identified as hikikomori, or recluses with social withdrawal syndrome. When the host of the show told the girls to write down something they liked to do, the girl beside me wrote, I like giving up. What on earth, I wondered, had g thrown this girl into such a bleak and depressive psychological state? The answer, I think, lies in the fact that our modern society rarely gives people the opportunity to throw in the towel, as it were. Simply put, the world doesn't afford people enough chances for asobi. The desire for asobi seems stronger in hikikomori people than in others. My advice to the girl was simple. It's all right, I said. Indulge yourself in a little asobi to empty your heart. In this book, too, I would like to encourage any readers who are struggling with similar issues. Take the time to asobi. Even the steering wheels and cars have a little asobi or play, which is precisely what makes steering the car possible. In short, play wor makes work possible. Whisper it in your heart, I shall asobi. It's a vow that will no doubt bring forth a bright landscape before your eyes. And the next entry here is Furakoko, or Hanging Swing. Furakoko, a seasonal word classified under spring, 
is an old word for a hanging swing, or what is today called the baranko. In ancient China, it was called the qiu qiang, or in Japanese, shu sheng. At some point, the furakoko of old became the baranko swing of today. The first parts of the words fura and bura have radically different connotations. Fura is elegant and refined, while bura has an unclean, vulgar ring on account of its muddied B sound. Take, for example, the ugly expression bura bura sura, which means to wander idly, and compare it to the mellifluous word fura fura, which expresses the pleasant state of being a bit tipsy. The two expressions are totally different in their connotations. Bura bura suggests something unsophisticated and in bad taste. Words that start with fura, fura koko included, are by contrast refined and elegant. If the word branko ev evokes the sense of a swing dangling loosely there with no one sitting in it, fura koko gives the feeling of a swing swaying back and forth in a leisurely, elegant way. I'm fully behind the idea of calling the swing a ubiquitous playground fixture by its original name, Furakoko. There is, of course, another swing term that came into use around the 10th century, Yusahari, derived from the verb Yusaburda, or to shake. Yusahari, too, seems much better than the ugly word, that ugly word, Buranko. Playground equipment such as this originated in the northern tribes of China. People would ride on a leather qiu qiang, shu sheng, around the time of the so-called cold food, or han xi festival, a han xi qingming festival, which fell on the 105th day after the winter sol solstice. The swing originated sometime in the 7th century BCE in the northern region of China, and when it came down to central China, it became the custom to amuse oneself with it around the start of spring, the so-called chunjie in China or di xing in Japan. Put simply, it was a kind of magical charm that people would use at the start of the spring to swing everything into movement, injecting a dynamic vitality into the hitherto slumbering, inert mass of wintertime nature. Therefore, one must not let the furakoko dangle inertly in a lackadaisical bura bura way. The elegance of fura far transcends the disheveled nuances of bura. The swing deserves vigor and a grand swaying motion, a dynamism that sends it flying into the air. The spring sky is flooded with a brilliant radiance, producing a clear, bright serenity. It's enough to make you feel that you might just ascend to heaven and take a seat among the transcendent immortals. Perhaps this is why Emperor Shuangzong of the High Tang Dynasty dubbed the swing, which was hugely popular with his court ladies, the Taoist sounding name Han Sengi, or plaything for half immortals. If you ever take a ride on the Fura Koko, breathe the air deep into your 